Many hot takes her youngies to the cockfighting pits. She prefers a hanging, though she readily admits. Viewed after drinking, turning wine until she's off her power. Good morrow, Mistress Payne. It has been quite some time since I last saw you. Uh, did you ever hear from the Archbishop? I recall your husband was intending to write to him, expressing your concerns about the Continentals. Aye, we did write, but he never replied. Not that I am surprised, mind you, as they do say that Archbishop Whitgift is a very idle man. Not to speak of the unsavoury goings-on within the walls of Lambeth Palace. They say that in the great dining hall, the Archbishop and his guests do feast and carouse from dusk till dawn. And tis said that in some of the palace rooms, they indulge in fornication and sodomitical sins. Verily, indeed. Then, doubtless that leaves him very little time to reply to every... Truly, methinks being surrounded by such decadence and corruption of the flesh is likely to have made the Archbishop very hard. Aye, bearing witness to so much vice would make a man very hard indeed. Ah. Uh... Hard? Dr. Foreman, insensible to the needs and difficulties of ordinary folk such as you and I. Verily, I do not wonder that such a hard man gave me no satisfaction. Which is why I am come to you this day, Dr. Foreman. Something did trouble me last night, and I would have you tell me what it might have been. I will if I can, madam. Prithee, describe it to me. Well, at first was the noise of a boat that did awaken me. I got up out of bed and went to the window to see what was. As you know, on Fourth Street, we are right by the banks of the Thames. In the moonlight, I could just make out a ferry crossing the river, loaded up with large barrels. And you thought it suspicious? Aye, indeed, for the hour was very late and the boat's lamp was not lit. I did not wake Mr. Payne to ask his opinion, for, in truth, he has told me he wishes to hear no more about the things I see from our window. So, I am come to you. For I can have no rest until I know who those men were and what they were doing. Who knows what foul deeds may be afoot in Lambeth Town? Mayhap the men I saw were Catholic spies, engaging in some manner of nefarious plot against the realm. Then let us see. What does God have to say regarding this boat you saw crossing the Thames last night? Was it some kind of elaborate Catholic plot? Or is there a more likely explanation? You did well to come to me, Mistress Payne. The stars confirm that the events you witnessed last night do indeed portend of doings of a most foul and sinister nature. I will pass your information on to one of my querents, whom I may not name, but who is a member of Her Majesty's Secret Service and reports directly to Her Majesty's Privy Council. I knew I could rely upon you, Dr. Foreman. You and I doing such important work together. We make quite the team, do we not? <laughs> I would not say that, precisely. Do not be falsely modest, Dr. Foreman. False modesty is naught but the sin of vanity in disguise. Now, I must do home hasten to tell my neighbours. Forsooth, I must warn them of this grave threat and bid them keep a watchful eye on our local Catholics. Blessed day, Dr. Foreman. Catholic terror plot to blow up Parliament foiled. Gunpowder barrels discovered in cellar. Hear ye! Tis well to jest that Mary paint is well to sneer and mock Until her views become the norm and will be quite a shock But for now let's laugh at her and how her knees laughs How her knees laughs Good day, Mistress Payne. You seem in good cheer. That I am, Dr. Foreman. This day I am taking my niece on a lovely outing to see the cockfighting in Vauxhall. Ah, there is a cockpit in Vauxhall now, is there? Aye, and a very fine one. 
And I did think we need a nice day out to turn our minds away from that terrible affair of the Catholics plotting to blow up the Houses of Parliament. And my niece does so love the cocks. <coughs> Doubtless, madam. Hmm. And the gunpowder plot was indeed a terrible business. They say it was the doings of a group of young Catholic nobles from the Midlands, do they not? And that the gunpowder was ferried across the Thames at Lambeth under cover of darkness. Doubtless, t'was the very same boat I did tell you about, Dr. Foreman. And of course, I must congratulate you for recognising how right I was to be suspicious of that boat I saw. Now, I bid you tell me, and do not be coy, Dr. Foreman, was it your relaying of my information to the authorities that foiled the gunpowder plot? <laughs> did you and I save England from the Catholics? I am afraid, madam, that I am not at liberty to confirm nor deny my involvement in the matter. Ah, but, oh, my days! Are you ill, Dr. Foreman? Mayhap we are both troubled with the same disease, for my eyes do also twitch and prick with pain. <laughs> Aye, I did remark the condition of your eyes. They are very red in appearance, and you seem troubled with a hacking cough. For how long have you had these troubles? Only these past few days, and as well as my eyes and my cough, I do also find it a trifle vexing to breathe. Then let us now consult the stars. What ails Mistress Mary Payne? Ah, madam, your symptoms are occasioned by noxious odours. Most likely you did lately inhale a large volume of smoke. Uh, mayhap your chimney requires cleaning. Indeed it does not, Dr. Foreman. My cleanliness is unimpeachable. I have my maidservant scour the house from top to bottom every day. Ah, then I cannot be sure what has occasioned your... Hold. What is that acrid odour? Methinks it does emanate from your clothing. Madam... Have you been taking part in the anti-Catholic pogroms that Lambeth has witnessed these past days? The burning of houses and shops? The lynching of priests from trees upon Lambeth Green? Mayhap I have, and what of it? You should be congratulating me and my ilk for keeping you safe, and for sending a clear message to those Catholics who would plot against our Parliament and blow us up with gunpowder. Madam, these Catholics are our neighbours, our colleagues, and our friends. I beseech you to consider your actions, madam. Are not Catholics people too, just as we are? If you prick them, uh, do they not bleed? Aye, and their flesh does burn the same and all. I fear I do not follow your reasoning, Dr. Foreman. Are they not subject to the same diseases, healed by the same cures as we are? And if not cured, then, alas, taken so soon, so needlessly. I did never have the chance to... Oh, my sweet Havis. Can you ever forgive me? Is something the matter with you, Dr. Foreman? On my honour, you do seem most troubled. Mayhap you should be going to consult with a doctor yourself. God keep you well, Dr. Foreman. Blessed day.
God give you good day, Your Grace. How fare you this... Know you whether the plague will reach as far as Lambeth? Have you seen it in the stars? Ah, the plague that has begun to spread throughout London. Rest assured, Your Grace, if the plague does indeed reach Lambeth, the people of Lambeth will have me, Dr. Simon Foreman, at their service. My renowned strong water cure will doubtless be required... I bid you, read the stars for me now. Will or will it not reach Lambeth? Of course, as it pleases, Your Grace. Let us see what the stars have to say. Will the London plague reach beyond the city walls to Lambeth? Ah, yes. Uh, the stars are most clear on the matter. Very clear indeed. Then what do they say? Tell me! Ah, uh, well, before I give you my answer, I would have your decision on granting me that medical license we spoke of on your previous visits. I am sorry, Your Grace, but I must insist upon it. Uh, I would gladly do so, but I find my hands tied due to various episcopal and doctrinal... <sighs> uh, as I see you are determined not to let the matter rest, I will speak true. Some years ago, the Queen's physician, Dr. Richard Smith, did write me a letter on behalf of the College of Physicians... He warned me, in the strongest terms, against granting you a medical license. So you see, I cannot grant you a license without raising the ire of the College of Physicians. But... Uh, now, now, Dr. Foreman. Doubtless you are thinking that a man of my position, one of the most powerful men in England, should not be so easily put off by such a letter. However, and methinks you know this from your own experience... The College is a terrifying organisation that will stop at nothing to get their way. One would be better off to find the Queen herself than the licensed doctors of London. For whilst our Lord God in Heaven may be merciful, the College of Physicians is not. I verily, I must own that what you say is very true. But mayhap I will furnish you with a letter of recommendation to the University of Cambridge. They may confer upon you a medical degree, and, thereby, a medical license. I thank you, Your Grace. Now, prithee, answer my question. Uh, I have bad news, Your Grace. Lambeth will not escape the plague this time. Things are quiet now, but, as I learned during the plague of 92, events may change apace. You must leave Lambeth before it's too late. Mm, I feared as much. I must begin preparations for the removal of the palace household to Sussex. Before you go, Your Grace, I believe you were intending to write me a letter of recommendation. Um, well, indeed, I will reflect on the quality of advice you have given me over the years, and if I judge that you have acted with some skill, then... then I will have my chaplain draft you a letter of recommendation and have it sent to you. Good day, Dr. Foreman. those ungrateful wretches. Have I not always been there for them when they needed me? Am I not the doctor who risked his life to cure them during the plague of 92, when all the other doctors and their high-born friends fled London and left them to die? <sighs> Indeed, mayhap next time I will think again before risking my life in the service of the townsfolk, if this is the way I'm to be repaid. <sighs> and forsooth, if my deeds are so easily forgotten by the living, 
What chance is there for my work to be remembered by generations to come? What will the world know of me once I'm gone? Ah, I see. Many years will pass before my work is to be given the recognition it deserves. Men living centuries from now, mayhap even ladies, will study my treatises and casebooks with great care and write histories about my work. <laughs> but hold, does not Mr. Shakespeare tell the lives of great men upon the stage? Perchance playwrights will use the wondrous stage machinery of the future to illuminate my work. Mayhap the story of my life will be told by players, for my work is of great historical importance. And now that I have a medical license, not even the College of Physicians has the power to discredit me. But if I am to go forth into the world to make any further contributions to the advancement of medical science, I must find a way to pry these wretched boards off my front door. William! William! Fetch me a crowbar! Ago in England in 1592, there begins our tale, and all of it is true. Through the whole of London, new born, great it spread, covering folk in weeping sores and leaving thousands dead. From towns and cities, doctors they did flee, leaving their patients to die in misery. But one brave doctor stayed when all the cowards fled. 